that Nigeria is extending curfews beyond the city of Lagos as anti-riot officers struggle to quell violence following protests against police brutality. A 24-hour curfew planned for the city, a key commercial hub and Africa's most popular city with an estimated 20 million residents was delayed to allow commuters to return home. Other regions are now imposing curfews. Well, let's talk about some of the developments over the last 24 hours. Uh, in, uh, joining us today, uh, live from Lagos, is Nigerian radio host and TV presenter, Folu Storms. Folu, good, good evening and thank you so much for your time and being available to speak to us. Firstly, when, when one goes through some of your social media pages, you've been posting a lot about the protests and what has happened in your country. Were you part of these protests when they unfolded? The protests started in a rather organic fashion. There was no um, initial set plan to protest. All of this was sparked by the killing of a young man on the 3rd of October in a state called Delta State. Now, there are 36 states in the Federation of Nigeria. Um, he was killed on the 3rd of October, and by the 8th of October, a few people had started taking out to the streets. Ordinarily, I'm not someone who necessarily believes in street action alone. I believe that if you want to change things, it has to be done on multiple levels. But the reality is that young people in this country are being targeted and have been a target for security agencies, for forces, um, for really anyone in power. Um, and, and that was something that a lot of people felt very strongly about and decided to speak up about peacefully. And so they started occupying um, key uh, transport and public service offices across the nation to signify our displeasure and asking the government specifically to end a, a, a part of the police unit called the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, who are most notorious for a number of the crimes. The young man who triggered this um, protest who was killed in Delta State, um, there was video evidence showing not just the killing, but then the uh, police officers driving off in his SUV. Um, and from before these particular sets of protests have been going on, I'd always spoken out very clearly against police brutality, abuse of power, because unfortunately it's something we see not just in Nigeria, but around the world. Mm -hmm. Folu, this special anti-robbery squad, what are the reasons that the government has given you as uh, Nigerian citizens about their existence? Why, were they, why have they been deployed? As far as I understand, historically, the squad was put together when armed robbery and violence in Nigeria were at an all-time high um, in the 90s, um, if I'm not mistaken, and I think you have to go back and track this. But essentially, I think it was a time when the regular police um, divisions were under a lot of pressure, and I think they'd sort of gone indoors into hiding. So this special unit, this elite force were created um, to really crack down on, on the, the, the very vicious criminal elements that existed, and I will not deny that those elements did exist. But since then, um, there, it seems that the mode of operation started to change amongst a number of the officers, um, there perhaps is maybe a lack of training for how they must interact with civilians. For whatever reason, it's gone out of control. And repeatedly over the years, there have been calls to disband the special anti robbery squad. And the Nigerian government, at least in three different years, if I'm not mistaken, 2016, 2017 as well, had announced the disbandment and the closure of the special anti robbery squad, which is why the protests this time were different. The young people of the country said that they would sit out at these important key locations until we began to see the action of the government because announcements can be made and they're often made very freely and very willingly and you will see in a lot in a number of the um reports out there the nigerian government have spoken about you know yeah we're trying to dialogue with you we're trying to help we are doing certain things but the reality is the action is not moving fast enough and for every day i believe bar one of the peaceful protests that were happening um protesters were jailed and killed um and that is not indicative of a government who is serious about ending police brutality, if that is what's happening at the hands of law enforcement. There seems to be discord in terms of the information that is coming out around, these shoot, around the shooting. So when we take a look at what some of the international agencies are, are, are saying, this is the human rights organizations, they're talking about people that have been killed. The number is contested. The message coming out of official government communication is that there were no killings. In fact, they're disputing the presence of the military at these protests. What, what have you seen on the ground there? 
I will say that the area where the shooting is meant to have happened in Lekki Phase 1, I have lived in this area for most of my life. I grew up here as a child. It is predominantly very peaceful suburb. If you think of perhaps of Rosebank, that's what um, Lekki Phase 1 specifically is like. The toll gate had become a centre for um, several youth in the area and in poorer areas to come to because there was always food, always music, always comfort, always safety. Mm -hmm. And these are the things that the government has not provided for the Nigerian people, which the Nigerian people continue to provide for themselves. I personally know at least one person who was on the ground when the shooting started, who has been a part of this protest, and there were shootings and there were deaths. Now, um, according to this person, I will not say that I know 100% because I was not there, but the reality is the Nigerian government has a history, a very long history, of killing unarmed civilians and then denying that it has happened. Let us not forget that in 1969, we had the Asaba massacre, where the Nigerian military marched into a civilian town and slaughtered several people there. We also had Fela Kuti in 1977, where soldiers surrounded his home, torched it, burnt it to the ground through his mother, Fumilaya Ransom Kuti, who is one of the heroes of this country down some stairs while she was 78 years old. And the report that came out officially from the government was there were unknown soldiers and no one knew who had ordered this. So to hear this coming from the Lagos State Governor, although incredibly disappointing and heartbreaking for the many young people who have gone out to that toll gate day in, day out, and who have done their best to help this country be better, it, um, it shows that they, they, they don't take the young people of this nation seriously. I believe that's what it shows mm -hmm. and that they can sweep this under the carpet like everything else. Because I do not understand for one second how we have videos showing what looks like men advancing in military formation and shooting as they are advancing. And then we've seen the bird. We had DJ Switch, who was the DJ that was on the ground at the time the curfew was called, at the time the shooting started, who was streaming live. We watched... We watched a man die on her IG live. And the governor of Lagos, the official channels, have come out to tell us that not one person died. Now, make of that what you will. But again, governments, not just the Nigerian government, have had history of executing their own civilians, attacking them, and then denying it. Follow the, the one thing that you've emphasized in this interview is the solidarity around young people in raising their voice around um, the abuses that are taking place. Do you think that the, the Nigerian state was incapacitated to deal with this resistance? Do they see it as a disruption to what they would want as the status quo? I believe that it is seen as a disruption. We must understand that um, people who benefit from the status quo will never see anything wrong with it. People who are benefiting from certain positions of power will always fight to keep that power. And when real power is threatened, unfortunately, um, we tend to see violent outcomes as a result. Um, again, I will reemphasize that, yes, there has been incredible unity. The class divide, even that ordinarily older generations would say exist and cannot be breached in Nigeria, was being broken down every day these protests were going on. As young people were standing shoulder to shoulder, even those who didn't want to be on the front line would go out and check on their brother and check on their sister and make sure they were good. Of course, they're going to be very small criminal elements, but that was not the main message and that was not the narrative. The protests have been peaceful. Where we have seen unrest is where the government or Oh, we seem to have lo lost that line to follow Storms, who's giving us her own account of uh, some of the developments that have been unfolding in Nigeria over the last couple of weeks, as literally thousands of people have been protesting against uh, this uh, use of the special anti-robbery squad. That's what uh, is, has been now called SARS. You would have seen the, the campaign, the hashtag, end SARS. Uh, Folio, I understand that we have you back on the line. Perhaps before, before I let you go, I know you don't speak on behalf of everyone, but uh, in terms of the conversations that are taking place, what, what's next? In terms of the conversations that are taking place, people are resolute in continuing to peacefully protest once the curfews are lifted 
at least in Lagos State, where there is a curfew, and in other parts of the of the country. I do know that internationally um, and locally as well, young people are gathering in different groups and making sure that they are putting pressure on their representatives, on the people in government that are there to serve us, because they are civil servants, to just do their jobs. If a fraction of the energy that has been dedicated to spinning the stories, to quelling the quote unquote unrest, or to disturbing peaceful protesters, had been put into shutting down this police unit, we wouldn't even be having this conversation today. The protests, the protesters would have left the streets ages ago. So what I'm saying is we're just going to continue peacefully and resolutely asking civil servants to do their jobs, to stop running to other countries, and we're imploring other nations to please return the civil servants back to Nigeria so they can come and do their jobs. Polo Storms, let's leave it there for tonight. Thank you so much for your account of things that are happening in Nigeria at this moment. We'll certainly keep in touch with you as, uh, as issues there continue to develop.